Hey guys, Luke at Crusader Machining here. Do you want to see how we make this part on this machine complete in one operation? If so, follow along. We're going to go over tooling selection, why we program it and make it the way we do, and some other details about manufacturing this part. Follow along, check it out. So hey team, first things first. This is the part we're making. We have an OD thread, an ID thread, 1215 hex, one and an eighth inch hex. We have to make several thousand of these, so we need to make it, first things first, good. We have to make the part good. I like to make it so my thread does this. Boom, easily spins up to that shoulder. And then my ID thread, the same so everything goes in smooth no burrs no hairs nothing smooth all the way up smooth all the way down with this being 1215 we will not have a huge challenge with fighting a difficult material but there's some tight tolerances on the part now I can't show the print but on that bore through I've got a plus or minus one and a half tolerance it's not that difficult to hold that but it's kind of a long bore and it's 562 diameter or 9 16 so it's a little bit of a tighter hole to get a boring bar in and it's a little long about three times deep neither one of those are that challenging with 1215 but we're going to lay out the job right now on how we do what in the machine so when you're looking at a part like this that you're going to use a transfer collet to grab it, you really wouldn't make it this way, hold on this diameter here, and then do all that on the sub. The reason you wouldn't do it that way is because this print has this wonderful diameter here to hold on. So on the main side, we'd feed out, do all of our machining, grab here with the sub, cut off, and now we have a nice rigid, nice rigid work holding setup for the sub side. So let's go in and start talking about the tools that we used. So on the part that we saw a moment ago, we have an OD thread, and if you saw, the thread gauge went up to the shoulder. So we have our rough turn, finish turn, and our thread. And see how they're all right near each other so we can do a quick index on the fly, which we'll show. But the key to having that the key to having that thread gauge go right up to the shoulder is that little groove in there or what we call a thread relief. This is what we do with that, an OD grooving tool. So when we're running this many parts, a few thousand of them, you don't want to have one tool, one tool take all the brunt of the work, especially with hex. That's called an interrupted cut. So what we do is we have a rough turn with a larger nose radius. In this case, a WNMG 432. Then we finish turn this front with a WNMG 431, a one nose radius, 164th. Then we, then we actually do our thread. Then we come back with our grooving tool. We turn again to turn off any burrs. And the grooving tool also deburrs up here, as well as back there behind the thread and the relief. And then at the end, we do what we call a cleanup pass. We deburr that thread. And a couple things there. The reason we de I just stepped in a little coolant. The reason we deburr that thread and do a cleanup pass is if we were to turn and thread, you're going to have burrs here and you're going to have them in the back. Someone would say, hey, Luke, why are you going to have burrs? I don't know. It's just the rule. It's just what happens. A thread throws up a burr on both sides of it. So we go back in there with the groove hit the undercut or the thread relief like it is on the print. But then we also come here and deburr the front. And then we do what we call a spring pass or a cleanup pass that cleans up that thread. That way when you're done, as I had showed in the beginning, smooth. Smooth as butter is what I say. A nice, smooth, clean thread. And we do that same thing on the sub side. We go in there, we bore it. We thread it, single point thread, we rebore, and then we go back and we re-thread. 
That way, when we go to start our thread gauge, smooth. If you didn't go in there and deburr and re-thread, when you go to put that gauge on there, there's going to be a little bit of a burr. It's what we call a, a hang-up. It's a little bit of sharp edge. The gauge won't go well. So we deburr it. Let's watch that run. So that was our rough turn, finish turn, thread, groove, re-thread. And I turned the OD here with the turning tool. Normally I wouldn't do that, but this thread on the outside is a non-standard thread. Normally I would just use a topping insert that would finish the major, the pitch diameter, and the thread root, but this is a non-standard thread. So I had to go back in and re-turn the major. That's why I did that. Now I wanna show you something here this is what I was talking about, the transfer. This is what you want to see when you're getting ready to transfer. A great diameter here that your sub can come up and grab it. And when it does, that's what it looks like in the sub spindle. So you can see now that is getting ready to be machined in the sub. So as we just covered there, that's how we do our main side work, our layout. Well, I don't want to say our layout, but that's how the job is laid out and you saw all the OD work. I'm not gonna do the drill in the bore to show on film. I do not like to drill dry, especially on, or bore dry, especially on something that has to have such a tight tolerance. Doesn't have any finish requirement. I think a 63 max or something like that, but I don't wanna take a chance of damaging that drill or that bore. Running the tools on the OD dry, I don't have a problem with at all, but the inside, I don't wanna take a chance especially if I run it, I go back, pass it off to the operator. He says to me five minutes later, hey, my bore is bad and my drill is burned up. Luke, what did you do? Little egg on my face. Has it happened before? Most definitely. Um, will it happen again? Probably. But that's how we do the main side. And then we transfer as I had just showed. And then on the sub side, the way that we do this here is like I had said, we're going to face off to break that edge on the corner, face, rough bore, finish bore, thread, rebore, re-thread, dump the part in the basket, bada bing, bada boom. But before we conclude this, I want to touch on that inside again. So we drill that. Our finish size on our print is 563, plus or minus one, one and a half. Now, Although the print is plus or minus one and a half, one thing that we do that I like to is we're gonna run that plus or minus one instead of plus or minus one and a half. I know everyone's saying, why do you say that? That's not what the print calls out. That's not what the print calls out. It calls out one and a half. True, it does. But if we have plus or minus one and a half and right here is our bore mean, I'm gonna tighten my tolerances. If we can hold plus, if you give someone plus or minus one and a half, they're gonna run some parts up to that plus or minus one and a half. But when you sh shrink the tolerances, they're not gonna exceed that one and a half. They're not even gonna come close to it. So I still have plus or minus five tenths on the low and five tenths on the high of error that I'm gonna minimize. It's what we call tightening or shrinking the tolerance. Help us to maintain quality throughout the run and improve the quality. Same thing if you have a print that says plus or minus a 64. Sure, you have plus or minus 15, but the customer wants it as close to that mean as possible. So on our quality records, instead of saying plus or minus 15, we'd say plus or minus five and still try to hold here. That way that operator isn't gonna come anywhere near that high or the low. Just something to touch on. Also with the bore, we have our drill, I'm gonna to try to pull up our bore here. Our drill that goes in and drills it, and then our boring tool, we use 
I'll show you. So here's the drill that we use, and we have plenty of room that we can drill through, and we're still not encroaching in the flutes. And then our bore is the real magic of the show. This is our boring tool. It is a 5 16 carbide shank that holds a CCMT 2 series insert. The reason I go with it, it's a 563, you, you're not gonna fit a half inch diameter bore, but the reason that we like using this 5 16 is there's room between the bar and the other wall, the part for chips to get out and coolant to get in. So we like using these little 5 16 uh, carbide shank bar. And for the threading inserts, we use a 16 ER18 three edge topping lay down style insert. Although it's not topping, it's an 18 pitch. It's just that the major is a little bit smaller than what the book calls for. So the insert's not really topping. It's just the insert that we use. The sub side ID thread is a special one. The designation is a PGT11. And for the longest time, I didn't know what that was. I just knew that the included thread angle was different. Standard included thread angle on a UNF or UNC is 60 degrees included. The PG11 or PGT11 is a conduit thread that's 80 degrees included. So we had to get a special insert for that. And that's about the layout of the job. It's a, a, for a lot of you experienced folks out there, it's pretty simple. This diameter allows us a wonderful di diameter to transfer. We run it very well. I think our cycle time is just about a minute, 40 seconds complete. We have a little bit of a tight tolerance here, plus or minus two, I think. The bore, of course, is plus or minus one and a half. Everything else is pretty wide open. And it's 12.15, it's gravy, baby. So anyways, to conclude, this is Luca Crusader Machining, signing out of today's video. I just wanted to give you a little load on how we run this part, how we lay it out. We didn't really touch on any programming. This was more machining principles and practices. Leave a comment below. What do you think of the video? What is it that you want to see? Like, leave a thumbs up, share the video, give me a follow. I really appreciate everyone watching. We're over 3,000 subs now. I really want to grow that. Check me out at Tic Tac and Instagram as well at Crusader Machining. Once again, this is Luke signing out. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time.